You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. I'm glad you're with me. I'm glad you're back. I was actually just over on Instagram, doing an Instagram Live, talking about some of the highlights from tonight's show. So um, that's probably the first thing I will mention before I get into today's episode. I recently decided that I was going to get back into the old Insta game. And um, I was running with the Tim J.P. Collins one for a long time, which I still have. On there, these days, I'll be talking more about my work stuff because I want to start promoting some of the things I'm doing at work. I'll be talking a bit about where I live, I'll be talking a bit about my family and stuff like that, but when it comes to anxiety, which is very special and close to my heart, I wanted to give it a bit more time and attention. I love talking about it and um, I just wanted to be able to go a bit deeper and I think um, I put a couple of posts up on Instagram this week, but I feel like when I'm trying to do everything in one place, I'm kind of playing small a little bit. So anyway, by by kind of segregating them, I can get passionate about my niches and I can spread them out and do them that way. So um, The Anxiety Podcast on Instagram. The Anxiety Podcast is where it's at. I'll be doing uh, some stuff in the old story if you check the circle at the top with my face on it um, and other posts and lives and stuff in there. So I'm going to try and make that more interactive where you can ask me questions in real time. Uh, If you have really good questions, though, I'm going to steal them and put them on here for the show. Because, as I just said on there, I think it's important the the podcast kind of makes things stick around for a long time. And uh, if they're important questions, which I want a lot of people to hear, I know that if I put them on the podcast, they're going to get heard by thousands of people and uh, it's going to have an impact. Because you guys kindly let me know that uh, that's what happens. So... Seemingly, lately, you know, I've been getting tons of emails and uh, direct messages on Instagram just saying how um, the podcast is really making a difference for people. So I just want to let you know, um, you know, I love getting those messages. That is my fuel. That's my energy. I love the feedback because um, whenever I think, oh, I don't know if I can... You know, I don't know if this is really making any difference. You guys tell me absolutely it is. And I don't even really think that anymore because I just got told so much and in so many different ways that I know that it is important. So thank you for that. And while I'm at it, uh, if you love the podcast that much, go and leave me a review. Go to uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to this and leave us a review. I really appreciate it. Um, because I haven't done my normal thing, uh, if you want, go to anxietypodcast.com. You can get my End Anxiety Toolkit. You can join the Facebook group. You can leave a donation, which I'll get onto a little bit more in a minute. And uh, anyway, there's just lots of lots of ways to engage there. There's also a five-week course, which you can get your hands on. It takes you to YouTube. And then if you're in a hurry, you can listen to the five weeks in uh, five days or whatever you want. Um, so anyway, that's all that. I have Today's a bit of a hodgepodge. Today's a bit of a smorgasbord. Today's a bit of a mix-up because... Um, I've been giving you some more personal updates about my travels over the last couple of weeks and now I have a backlog of questions to get through. So I'm just going to start banging them out and knocking them off and, uh, you know, answering them as quickly as I can, as efficiently as I can. But if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I've got a question I don't think you've ever talked about or I've got a question which I think is unique and different or you just want to ask the same question again and see what I think about it now... Go to the contact page at anxietypodcast.com and send me a message and I will absolutely answer it for you. Um, Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get around to it because uh, I get a few of them, but um, I love the questions and I love the interaction. First of all, though, before I get into the questions, which I have, I think, three of tonight, I just wanted to, um, by the way, somebody who's just on the Instagram live, this is hilarious. It's now when I'm making this, it's half past eight on Wednesday evening and, and they said hey I'm in New Zealand and I was like what time is it where you are and they were like 2 37 in the afternoon on Thursday I was like wow that's so crazy um, that is what you call a different time zone um, anyway so I'm all over the place at the moment <laughs> um, but the first thing I wanted to do is say thank you to a gentleman who went to the Patreon page and uh, made uh, a donation of $250, which is massively appreciated. Um, There's a donation button on my website. There's also the Patreon thing. So if you ever feel like you want to contribute, 
I'm not rolling around in Scrooge McDuck land over here in piles of money from the podcast. Um, I probably through doing a bit of coaching and a few donations make enough to cover the costs of running it, which are, you know, the email list I have and the, the hosting costs for the podcast and, and all that kind of stuff. I don't really even spend any money on equipment. I am very um, lightweight when it comes to that. I'm recording this most of the time in a lavalier mic plugged into my iPhone and I'm just rocking it out wherever I can. Um, so there's not a big budget on that side, but when somebody does that, it, you know, it makes a big difference. It puts a little bit of money in the bank and, and I appreciate that. And, you know, as I've talked about before, I've, I don't, I have a great listenership, but I don't have uh, an advertiser at the moment. So if you are an advertiser and you want to sponsor the show, please get in touch. I'm not adverse to it. It's just for me, I want it to be something that makes sense and fits. I don't want to just advertise, you know, um, random internet things to make money. I want them to be congruent with the audience um, so that it kind of is useful to you guys instead of me just filling your ears with nonsense. Um, so that's kind of, you know, just want to say thank you to this individual. They sent me a lovely message and just basically said, listen, um, you know, they just wanted to, I'll I'll read out a couple of bits off their message, but, um, they said they wanted to tell me that they have incredible gratitude for my contribution to the world. They've been struggling with panic attacks for about six years. Um, and then about two years ago, they got into listening to the podcast and it, it really brought them back from the edge. Um, and, uh, the, the final bit, which kind of touched me was a bit, touched me a bit was when they said, thank you for helping me get my head straight so that I could provide help to myself and my family. And that for me is a fantastic reminder that we have to put on our own oxygen mask first when it comes to helping other people, right? Unless you are in a good place and taking care of yourself, it's very difficult to help other people. And the nature of us beauties, the anxiety sufferer, the uh, the prototypical anxiety sufferer is we're people pleasers. So a lot of the time we try and help everybody else before we help ourselves. And that all that does is leave us feeling like absolute shit because we haven't put on our own oxygen mask first. So there we are, starved of oxygen, trying to help other people. Um, and as you can see with that analogy, it doesn't work very well. So anyway, this uh, this young man has done that and I appreciate it and uh, I appreciate the message um, and, uh, you know, the, the donation as well. Um, all of that stuff is great. All right. Now I'm going to change it up onto something totally different. Um, I got this message from, uh, uh, somebody else who, who clearly, uh, has something coming up this week. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to throw it in and blend it up with some older questions, but throw this in right now to give them some support. So this one is talking about dental anxiety, which I've covered before. Um, as you might remember, I went through some of my own dental escapades uh, historically. And, um, you know, this individual says, on Friday, I'm having two lower teeth taken out um, and two teeth in my gums taken out. This is due to overcrowding in my gums. I'm really nervous about the anesthetic. Your podcast has helped me a lot, but I still thought I would email. I'm only a teenager and I've never really had anything like this before. And it really scares me. So, <clears throat> First of all, thanks for asking the question. That's brave. Thanks for emailing it and sending it in. Second of all, you know, I don't know many people who love the dentist. I don't know many people who say, I'm going to the dentist today. I'm getting some work done. And that is bloody brilliant. I just don't know many people who think that. So it's always uncomfortable. Um, And I think, you know, I often think about things that we do in our lives, which are giving back to our bodies. Um, that could be going to get a massage, that could be working out at the gym, it could be eating healthy food, but it could also be taking care of your mouth and going to the dentist and getting that stuff done. So one thing I know for sure is that is is this, is that the anticipation, and maybe for some of you, you're like Tim stating the obvious here, but I don't care, I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the anticipation of the pain is always worse than the pain, sorry, is always worse. Yeah, the anticipation is worse than the pain itself. Whenever I've had to go in for dental procedures, I go in there, I think, God, this is going to be terrible and I'm and I'm clenched up and, you know, not feeling great about it. Um, once I had it done and walked out, I've been like, it wasn't that bad, you know. And so, and I'm, um, this might be too much detail for some of you who hate dental stuff, but I'm very uh, hard to freeze. So whenever I go in, the dentist like sticks the needle in my gums. He's like, right, ready to go and starts the drill. And I'm like, I can still feel everything. He's like, okay, let me inject you with some more stuff. And after a few rounds of that, I'm numbed up and, and we're off to the races. But, 
you know, when it, whenever that happens now, I always think like this is such a, a temporary amount of pain um, that by the time it's finished, I'm just grateful that it's over. Um, I think it was always temporary. And in your case, um, th- this person is, is clearly having some stuff done. They're having two lower teeth taken out and two teeth in their gums taken out. So it's a decent amount of work. Um, but also, you know, again, recently I had my wisdom teeth out and, uh, although I was, wasn't really conscious for that, but after the fact it was painful, but I was glad it was done. So I think two takeaways. One is that think about, think about it as an investment in yourself. You're investing in your well-being by having this done. It's good for you. Um, it's going to no doubt feel better. Your mouth is going to be, you know, grateful that you took care of it. And it's on some level, it's not really optional. Like we just got, we just got to get this done. And the other part of it is, is that I think you'll find that it's temporary. You're going to come out the other side. You know, the human body is is extremely good at healing, particularly in our mouths. Heal very quickly from dental work. My my uh, wisdom teeth after a couple of days, it was all fixed up. So anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge that and say, kind of good job for bringing it up and uh, I think you'll be fine. Let us know how you get on for sure. Um, All right, so a couple more things. The one thing I wanted to switch to now is that um, when I was at work today, I went and made a a video for uh, a promotion we're doing and I wanted to kind of share that experience with you because I used to be, I used to have a huge amount of trepidation around um, speaking even on camera. So I would you know, for days in advance, I'd be fretting about what I was going to say. I would be super nervous when I went to sleep at night. It was the last thing I thought about when I woke up in the morning. It was the first thing I thought about. And that would be, you know, just what if I get it wrong? What if the people who are watching are disappointed? What if they think I'm useless? What if I start sweating on camera? And that's why I love podcasts so much, because I could be sweating like crazy and you don't even know. Um, But like, what if my voice starts shaking? What if, what if, what if? And I got through it and I scraped through it. And this is, you know, for me, this was both public speaking live and speaking into cameras. Um, Because either way, this, this, you know, I felt a certain amount of self-judgment there. And so today and the last few times I've done it, but I just thought I'd bring it up again and and let you know, because I think it's part of my evolution is today. I didn't feel like that. I didn't think about it beforehand. I looked at my lines a few times and kind of learned what I had to say into the camera um, and showed up and just enjoyed the process. And, you know, I got the, one of the per- people that were with me, I got them to take some pictures so I could put it on my Instagram. And I never would have done that before. Cause I would have thought, I don't want to capture this moment in case I fuck it up. Right. I don't know if that resonates with anybody listening to this, but often kind of just before I would go and do, uh, a talk at work or a s- speech around m- mental health related stuff or whatever it was, I was like, I don't want to capture this moment on camera in case I fuck it up, and I'll forever be reminded of it. So now I've kind of evolved to the stage where I'm like, take some pictures of this, because it would be kind of nice to capture the moment, right? So that self-belief, which is cultivated over time, is now kind of improving bit by bit. And I had to keep putting myself in the line of fire. I had to keep doing it when I was sweating a bit and shaking a bit and didn't really feel like it. I had to keep leaning in, because having the knowledge that I can still scrape through it even when I'm feeling awful I know that this sounds ridiculous but knowing that I can scrape through it when I feel like shit empowered me to know that if I could just incrementally one degree at a time improve that one percent at a time improve that then uh eventually oh just I just used to think I used to go back in time and think if I could feel comfortable doing this I would be so grateful if I could do this and just enjoy the process and so today was a reminder that I could do it and really enjoy the process and really enjoy, you know, showing off my my skills of of being able to talk and, and, you know, knowing knowledge about a subject and um, doing that with some enthusiasm, right? I always, I suppose I always knew deep down somewhere it was in there. It was just surrounded in so much doubt and uncertainty that it was just didn't never shone out. So, if you're going through a stage at the moment in your life where you're like, I just can't do it, whether that's, you know, starting a new relationship or starting a new job or doing something in public or whatever it happens to be for you, then I would encourage you, I implore you to just lean in a little bit and just do some and just keep putting yourself in a state of being a little bit uncomfortable 
time after time. And like anything, the first time we do it is extremely difficult. But over time, it becomes like, I've done this before. This is familiar. This is comfortable. I walk into a room where there's lights and cameras and people and I'm like, doesn't freak me out as much anymore because it's familiar and I've seen it before, right? So just keep trying. Just keep swimming, as Dory said. Um, so that was that. Um, this, uh, this is another one which kind of leads on from what I was saying. So another great listener question, just crushing these now. I've been listening to your podcast for a few years now and I check back in every couple of months and catch up on new casts. So cool. I just wanted you to know how much I enjoy and benefit uh from your take and advice on anxiety. Been a sufferer for six years now, and my brain decided to flip the switch, and now my amygdala is on overdrive. I function well, but lately I've gotten fed up and frustrated. Um, I pop your podcast on whenever I can. Thank you again for your time and dedication to the anxiety world. I do have one question, just one question, just a little question. Um, How was you, or what was your biggest tactic or tool to help you treat your anxiety? What was your biggest tactical tool to help you treat your anxiety? And I think, you know, the answer to this is so vast. And I think that's kind of like almost looking for the silver bullet. It's looking for the ultimate answer, the cure, which a lot of people will try and sell you in an online course. Don't buy those online courses. There is no cure. Um, (laughs) I've I've talked about that in an episode before as well. But... um, you know, for me, it comes. It came down to so many different pieces of the puzzle. It came down to, and I've talked about this before, but I will talk about it again. It came down to my relationships, who was I surrounded myself with, the information I was consuming, right? Um, came down to a massive piece of like physical exercise, uh, emotional uh, nutrition that I was consuming, where I live, the work I did, the people I talked to, um, what I thought about myself, like my mental game. And that's a big, you know, a big component of this is, uh, anxiety undermines your confidence in such a massive way. It's such a huge side swipe, takes your legs out um, while you're stood there and then laughs at you. And so I think rebuilding the confidence is, is a huge piece of it. And that's just what I was talking about with the speaking on camera. It's like, you got to keep doing it and you got to keep practicing and you got to reestablish that confidence and prove to yourself in spite of yourself that you can do it and you can persevere and you will not give in. You're going to succeed in this endeavor to, to get there, right? And so I think uh, I wrote down on my notes, I think actually when I, when I sat with that for a minute and thought about it, the biggest tactic or tool to help you treat your anxiety is the willingness to change the desire to change is maybe a better way of putting it. The desire to change. If you don't want to change, all of the motivational speaking from me or anybody else in the world isn't going to help you change. You have to have the burning desire through discomfort, through life changes and reflection and insights, whether this, whether it's, you know, meditation or journaling or just searching gently searching for the answer but that desire to change has to be there because otherwise you know you just don't and um you know that's a a perfect segue really onto the final question um which is the final question is is one which i was just going to skip over and not bother answering to be honest because i feel like i've talked about it before but Back to my previous point of honoring these questions from you guys and uh, the fact that opinions change over time, I wanted to readdress this. So the last one is my anxiety started almost two years ago. I've tried many different medications, but the only ones that actually work are benzodiazepines, which scare the crap out of me because they are so addictive. Um, I've never had any addiction issues. Did you ever try medications? Uh, Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Um, so first of all, yeah, I've heard benzodiazepines also are extremely addictive and extremely hard to get off of. So um, be very, very careful if you're, you know, if you're getting involved in in any medications. Really, please consult your doctor. If you're tapering off of any medications, please consult your doctor. That is nothing I ever give advice on because it's very, very important to make sure that if you're stopping something, you do it properly and uh, and really get the advice of somebody who's. Uh, a professional in that field and there's there's lots of other resources out there for that but I will say um, you know I've told this in my story before when I first had some of my massive uh, initial 
panic attacks and sort of not knowing what was going on. And I went to the doctors and said, this is what's going on. And the doctor quickly gave me some uh, antidepressants or some SSRIs. And I went home and put one in my mouth. And then just before before they even had a chance to kick in, because uh, I think you have to take them for a few weeks before they work, I already felt like it was going to make me worse. Um, I already felt like just having that in my system was making me kind of you know, more concerned than, uh, than I think it was going to do benefit. So, you know, but I have, I have met people on my travels and spoken to coaching clients and stuff over the years that have said that it got them over a hump and it got, it served the purpose of kind of getting them to a place where they felt like they could tackle it. So whatever your journey is, I'm not going to prescribe, excuse the pun. I'm not going to prescribe, uh, an approach to you I would just say that different approaches work for different people and for me personally I kind of needed in in my own uh for my own mental clarity I needed to do it the holistic route I needed to just start to make those changes and uh and struggle a little bit and fail and get through them and move on and whatever your approach is um you know it has to be something that works for you and long term that's all that really matters and you know the the only i guess one and you if you if you're this kind of person you're probably not listening to this podcast about trying to overcome anxiety or improve your life or anything but the one thing that concerns me is if somebody says right i went to the doctor i got my antidepressants and uh, that's the end of that good job no more anxiety brilliant feeling great um because i think that as i always talk about i think that anxiety is a is a message for us sensitive people that something is off in our lives and i think if we mask it the danger is is that it's going to you know, come back, um, or it's going to display in other ways, um, or it's just not going to be something that we address. And I think my life, you know, and I never thought I would say this, but my life is much richer for having anxiety than it otherwise would have been. Um, have I had to do a lot of work? Hell yes. Has it, you know, kept me up at night? Hell yes. Has it stressed me out beyond belief sometimes? Absolutely. But the, the, the fact that I get to give back now through talking to you guys about it and connecting with people is fantastic. The the depth of relationships I have with people I meet in my life through sharing a bit of my story with them is amazing. And I just wouldn't have had the balls or the... Um, I wouldn't have been brave enough to go as deep if I'd never been affected. And uh, that is really, you know, that's the the sort of final word on that for me. So... Um, I'm going to leave it there because I've been talking for a while now, but hopefully you've enjoyed the random uh, nature of today's episode where I answered a few questions. Again, if you have an epi- if you have a question, please send it to me. You can send me an email. You can go to the contact page. You can follow me at The Anxiety Podcast on Instagram. Send me a DM there. Check out some of the stories that I've been up to. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.